Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that video. And for those of you who are new, this is basically just a bi-monthly, sometimes I can do it weekly, vlog that I do on the various different things that are going on around Rain Country Homestead. And I also like to link you back to older videos showing you how to do some of the things I'll be discussing, as well as keeping you updated on different experiments that I'm working on or fill you in on new experiments that I'm trying out. Now, just so you know, the date that I'm shooting this is actually July 12th. So you'll be seeing it probably three to four weeks out. So that's why I don't talk a whole lot about what's going on in my garden in these videos, because I try to keep those ones more current to the time that I'm actually shooting them so it doesn't confuse you. But stay, keeping myself three, sometimes four weeks ahead is just a way that I stay prepared in case something major happens and I just don't have time to shoot and edit videos, which has been happening a lot lately. So I have been kind of eating through some of my uh, video storage that I have. So anyway, let's get busy talking about some of the various things here. So you may have seen the video I recently did on my new favorite way to make extracts which is really about the solvent, I, the solvent that I prefer to use. And so in that video, I had started a batch of peppermint extract. Now this was using a fresh peppermint from the garden, but mostly I use dried things for making my extracts. So the other thing is a cinnamon that I got going. I have three cinnamon sticks in here. And then the one I didn't show in the video because I started it after I shot the video was a batch of strawberry using some organic freeze-dried strawberries that I got from Mother Earth products. And yes, they do get them in occasionally. You just have to keep watching. So I only, when it comes to things like that, strawberries, I only get them organic whenever I'm able. I do grow strawberries, but I'm still working on expanding my strawberry beds and where I'm growing them so that I can get a better harvest for putting them up for various things. Whether it be for dehydrating for making extracts or freezing up for being able to make Patrick's creamsicles or for even making jam. So anyway, I wanted to update you on, even though that it's only been, at the time that I'm shooting this video, I think maybe a week tops. Maybe I don't even think it's been that long since I've started them. But I tasted them actually the next day and I couldn't believe how powerful the flavor was. Now typically I leave my extracts for up to for at least two months before I use them. But I'm thinking on all of these, the cinnamon, the strawberry, and the peppermint, I'll be able to use them a lot sooner than that if I need to. I'm gonna be putting these back in the cabinet after I shoot this video and i'm going to still try to keep them for the whole two month period but again i was amazed at how strong the flavor was on these so i'll make sure i shake them at least one more time because once they get put away in that cabinet back in the pantry i won't remember to shake them daily because i have to see them every day in order to remember to shake them every day but as long as they're being shaken for at least the first few days uh, and you maybe remember occasionally that's cool you know that that should be good because these are extracting beautifully uh, so speaking of extracts, in fact, this is going to be a lot about extracts now that I think about it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is that I did uh, top off my 2020 jar of vanilla beans. So I waited, I hadn't bought vanilla beans in five years. So here was the last jar that I had filled up in 2015 when I was getting the vanilla beans i think i was paying 30 dollars for a quarter pound i don't know how many beans that actually was to be honest then the vanilla beans skyrocketed for whatever reason i thought it had to do with bee die off but which i'd mentioned in an extract video i did a couple of years ago but since then i've learned that the vanilla beans are actually always pollinated by hand so i don't know what the cause was for the skyrocketing of the vanilla beans but they have since gone down quite a bit not as low as they were when I stocked up in 2015 but enough that I felt I'm going to go ahead and do this now because I've been watching for this for a while and especially the way things are now I don't think they're going to go any lower so what I've been doing was getting 
And I'll link to them down below if they're still available through the subscribe and save program on Amazon because you get you can save a little bit more in percentage. It's five, ten, or fifteen percent depending on the item and how many things that you're subscribed to per month. To get the full fifteen percent, you have to at least have five different things that you have arriving but you can change it up at any time but anyway i was doing the vanilla beans and i was getting in some every month until i was able to top off another whole jar so now that i've got another jar uh, topped off and vacuum sealed this should be good for years and years and years i mean like i said this one here is already five years old and this is the one the first one i had filled up in the same year and you can see it's a lot more sparse because this is the one i'm currently working through and i currently have a lot of different vanilla extract going in including a big large one and that's the one i'm using as a perpetual one so i'm going to keep adding solvent to it so I should be set for vanilla beans for the rest of my life. But anyway, I'll link to the video down below of me making this extract and where I talk about some of my extracts if you're interested. I do have several other extract making videos because I keep changing up the way I do it. The most common way that people will use is vodka, but I'm always looking for the most non-GMO, organic, and cheap way to do it. I'll get back to talking more about extracts in a minute, but first I wanted to show you I have been, some of you know that I think it was last year, year before, I started making a bunch of seed bags for storing my different seeds that I saved my, from my garden. And this is in particular larger seeds, not little teeny tiny seeds. So in this one here, I've got pumpkin seeds. They're actually pumpkin seeds I saved from 2015 and pulled them out this year and have been planting them and they've been germinating even though they're that old. And so it's just a little drawstring bag. I have a video showing how I make these, but I really like these because they're cotton for one and they're not so that I'm getting the seeds out of the plastic. And when I'm putting seeds in the bags and I'm not uh, certain that they're fully dry yet, then I can just hang the bags up wherever, usually in the living room uh, around the fireplace so that the seeds inside can fully dry before I put them away into storage. So that's why I prefer the cotton and nothing's fallen out of these. So this particular bag has the purple potted pole beans. This one has my, my various different runner beans in there. And I have lots more seed bags. I have one for my snow peas. I have one for my dwarf nasturtiums and so on and so forth. So uh, anyway, these get a lot of use. I'm really liking them. It just makes it easy and a more natural way to keep my seeds contained in something. And I'm trying to save up as much seed as I possibly can, even if I'm concerned about cross pollination in some of my squash seed, I'm going to go ahead and save it anyway. I just want to make sure that I mark them so I know which year and what other things were growing along with them that they could have cross pollinated with and then give them a try and see how it works. I might end up with some weird mutt squash and I might end up with some mutt squash that's actually really good. So just come up with my own pumpkin variety, rain country pumpkin or something like that. And then another thing I started just recently was my first batch. Remember this video, the, the date this video shot is July 12th. So this will probably be about done by the time you're seeing this. And so it's my first batch of the season of my rose petal vinegar. And uh, I'm still thinking about going and adding some marshmallow leaves at least in here because marshmallow leaves are really good for the hair are, as are the rose petals. So any of my floral vinegars like this, this kind of herbal vinegar that I make is made as a hair rinse slash conditioner. And so I was gonna put marshmallow root in here with it, but I don't wanna dig up any of my marshmallow root right now. It's too early in the season to do that. But here's some pictures where you can see what my rose petal vinegar usually looks like, or even when I mix in things like pansies, nasturtiums and stuff like that. Oh, that's an idea. I can put some of my dwarf nasturtiums in here because nasturtium flowers are really, really good for the hair. So anyway, I'm waving this chopstick around and what this is for is sometimes I'll have a little tiny wooden spoon, but a chopstick stick works really good because when you're using the half gallon jars it's nice and long and then I can just stir that up and it's not too wide like a longer wooden spoon that uh, it becomes problematic trying to get in there and stir stuff up so I try to stir my vinegar every day when I remember at least and that's just uh, that just keeps it active and lively and keeps molds and stuff from forming on the top 
Now, before I move on from the vinegar topic, I do have a whole playlist just on vinegar making. And I recommend if you go back and you watch a video from 2016, maybe even 2017 on vinegar, I do things a little differently now than I did back then. So I recommend you check out my more current videos on vinegar making, but I do plan on doing more. All right, now moving on to the last couple of topics, you'll see right here, this, uh, these are the meads that I started. If you've been kind of following the progress on this, I have a video out just on how to make mead, but I also have a whole playlist of winemaking. Now, if you don't know what mead is, M-E-A-D, it is a honey wine. So the main difference is it's made with honey rather than just fruit juice with usually that usually has sugar added to it. With the mead, it's a honey water mixture. And commonly, that's all you use. But when I do mead, I've always added fruit to it, uh, making, making it different every time. And these were the first ones I tried using freeze-dried fruits. Now, the color would be brighter, except for the honey I'm working through is older honey. And honey has a tendency a lot of times to get real dark with age. The flavor is still great. The color just doesn't look as pretty. But they're still pretty tasty ones, especially this one. This was the raspberry. This is the pineapple mango. It turned out okay. I'm not liking the flavor near as much as this one though. So this is gonna be the one I'm gonna use for barter. I know a couple, one's a family member and one's a friend. They both like to go out fishing quite a bit around here. We get a lot of steelhead and salmon around here. And so my plan is to trade them a bottle of the raspberry mead for some salmon or steelhead, whichever one that they have. And it will be fresh because they go fishing quite a bit so on both of these I need to do one final rack to get the sediments off the bottom I've racked each of these once but I'm thinking one more rack will be good and anyway in this picture you can see at the bottom that's the sediments it's always more of a white layer and so when you rack it what you're doing is you're siphoning the wine from the top working down so that you're trying to keep out as much of the sediments as possible it can take a few rackings to get a nice clear wine usually with mead though mead has a tendency to always stay more on the cloudy side as you can see in some of these pictures here though i did have a raspberry mead one year that i managed to get pretty clear it turned out a real beautiful color as you can see in this photo right here that was the raspberry mead and uh, that one i did with fresh raspberries so this again this was the first time using any kind of dried or freeze-dried fruits but in the past when i was making meads i always used fresh fruit whether they be from my garden or stuff that i bought from the store and that was just for the fun of adding different flavors so anyway these will be getting i'll be racking these both probably today or tomorrow one final time and then getting them bottled up i have a video on that's just about all the many uses for homemade wine because most of you know i don't drink but i make wine because it has so many uses in the kitchen medicinally and even like i mentioned for barter which is especially with the way things are going now uh even if you don't drink learning how to make wine for the sake of barter and for medicinal uses i think is incredibly important so with that being said i'm going to be shooting a video probably today or tomorrow i'm hoping today as soon as i finish this one i need to make myself some more of my deep sleep and muscle relaxer and so this is also really great for pain and so i'm going to be getting another batch of this going today i'll be using my own homemade wine i'll be using i think the apple wine in that one and i'm going to try adding the honey like i did when i made these ones for flavoring i think i'm going to use three different herbs in this the main one's going to be valerian that's where the, I, I find the most powerful one but i'm still going to go ahead and add a little bit of each of these i always just make up my recipes a little bit different every time but passion flower to me does not taste good at all and valerian root, I don't mind the flavor, but it's not super great. But when I made this years ago, I made that one with vodka. I don't make even my medicinal extracts. I don't do that anymore. And valerian root is so very powerful and so strong flavored on its own. I don't see the need to have to use 
uh, vodka to do that. I use my homemade wine. It's organic, it's non-GMO, and it's practically free. So that's what I'll be doing with that. So I'll be watching for that video to come out soon. If I shoot it today, it should be out within the next two to three days, depending on, I might squeeze some garden videos in between this one and that. But anyway, the valerian root is excellent. This is some dried valerian root that I bought. I do grow valerian now. I bought this before I started growing it. So I got to work through this and that's great because I'm still allowing my valerians to get established real well before I start using the roots. However, the leaves and the flowers are also very good to help promote sleep, to relax the muscles and as a good pain reliever. And I'm finding that when I use it in conjunction, especially with catnip and feverfew, it really has a powerful effect. And that's just eating the, the leaves, the catnip and the feverfew leaves, all of them fresh from the plants themselves when they're growing like they are right now. And then the other thing I wanted to mention right here, you can see some valerian flowers that I cut. I've been cutting tons of valerian flowers off of my main valerian plant. I have three older plants and then I have several new ones that won't flower until next year. But anyway, this year I'm saving the seed to put up on my store. So if all goes well, I should have a lot of seed going up in, on my store. So I think they, they might be available on the store in about a month from the time that you're actually seeing this video. So I have a whole pillowcase right now full of valerian flowers and I'm still not done harvesting them. That's how I dry my seed now from most things is I take old pillowcases, you know, whether it be uh, from ones I get from garage sales or old ones I have that I don't use anymore, I'm finding pillowcases to be the best way for me to save my seed or to at least dry them. Because I can put the whole stalks of plants like my lamb's ear, my stinging nettle that are just loaded with seeds. I just carefully put them down into the pillowcases and then I'll hang them up usually on the clothesline inside the house this time of year. But I can also use the greenhouse for that. And that way they get uh, they get more air all around them and they'll dry quicker and being in cloth there's more airflow there rather than putting in them something like a plastic bag it's nice when you can use something more natural so I'm finding the pillowcases I started implementing that last year I just came up with the idea and loved it it's perfect and it's totally contained even for the teeny tiny seeds like the sting and nettle they all fall to the bottom that way and then you can just take the the you know the stems and stuff out and then start sorting through your seeds all right well i hope you enjoyed my this and that video for this week and don't forget to check out the videos i'll have linked down below and be watching for the videos yet to come okay well thanks for watching take care and god bless